Welcome to the Terry Sullivan Show. I'm Terry Sullivan. I'm glad you're with us today. And today I'm super excited about our, our guest because, well, we just, we work together. Uh, Bobby Cuban uh, is with me today. And Bobby is a sausage maker. That's right, we make all of our own sausage in-house at Sullivan Old Town Barbecue. Sullivan Barbecue, all of our sausage is made in-house, made by Bobby. And I'm so glad he's here because he's gonna take you through uh, the process of making sausage. And so Bobby, it's good to have you. Nice, nice to be here, Terry. Thank you, thank you for being here. So you, you've you had kind of a, an interesting life. I mean, you went down the, the engineering road and stayed in that for quite a while. and Did engineering for about 20, a little over 20 years. And now you're making sausage. Now I'm making sausage. So tell me, how did that happen? How did, did you just wake up one morning and go, well, I'm gonna make sausage? No, not really. I grew up making sausage. I'm, I'm a Czech heritage. My mom and dad are both Czech and grew up in a small town in Ennis. Been making sausage all my life, Terry. It's just something we did. That was just family traditions. And uh, probably in the last, about in the last five or six years, I really kind of took it up to a different notch. Started branching out a little bit, doing more non-traditional type sausages than what we just make, you know, the typical Czech klobasa that we make at home. And um, you know, it's uh, Bobby, it's 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 great sausage. I, you, you know, in Texas, it's it's really when you, when you talk about barbecue, it's all about brisket and then ribs and then sausage, you know, and, and that kind of thing. But I'll tell you, here at Sullivan uh, Barbecue. We just have people ask about the sausage mm -hmm. all the time. The jalapeno cheddar sausage. They love the blend that you make that sausage with. And, and of course, the, the neat thing about it is, is, is you're using uh, trimmings from our prime brisket when we trim those briskets right. out. And, and uh, you're including that with a pork butt. And, uh, and it makes a tremendous sausage. But you're talking about different flavors. You know, we, we discussed a month or so ago about introducing a different mm -hmm. kind of flavor. And you came back to me and you said, how about a Frito pie sausage? And I couldn't wrap my head around it. I'm thinking, no, that's kind of like trying to get me to eat fish tacos. No, I'm right. not putting fish in a taco. So I'm thinking, no, Frito, no, Frito pie, that's where you make the Fritos and the cheese and the chili. That's a Texas staple. Well, then you brought me some. You made it. You brought it. I tasted of it. I closed my eyes. I'm thinking, I'm eating Frito chili pie. So we rolled it out a few weeks ago, and people absolutely love it. It's definitely different, isn't it? Well, it's different, but it's a, I mean, I ask people all the time, I say, I'm just going to let you taste of this. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think it is. And they roll it around, and they're tasting of it, and they go, tamales, no. Chili, no. But when I say it's Frito chili pie, they, it, it just clicks. It does. It clicks. So that's the kind of things that you do. And, and, and here in a minute, we're going to go back to the kitchen and you're going to show us how you do all of that. But what made you, I mean, you're, you're trying to, as you can, you're trying to pull out of the engineering world and you'd like to do this full time. It's kind of a unique concept. A lot of barbecue restaurants that don't make their own in-house sausage. You didn't know how to make sausage. So you can't train somebody to make your sausage for you. Right. So you'd have to either hire somebody that already knows how to do it. I can come in day one. Mr. Terry says, hey, I need 30 pounds of jalapeno cheese sausage. And I come in and make it right in, right in your kitchen. If you want it a little saltier, I adjust the recipe for your, your taste level. You want more peppers? You want more cheese? We adjust that. It's customized just for you. How'd you learn that, Bobby? I mean, you know, there's, there's a balance. There's a blend and a balance to, to any kind of barbecue, really. But, and you, you, how do you adjust that? I mean, do you, do you have training there? Is it just trial by error? It's, it's a little trial by error. And the, here's where the engineering comes out and the sausage making. I've got spreadsheets set up. So I know exactly what percentage of salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and all those other secret ingredients go into your sausage. So you came in one day, you said to me, what are you doing about sausage? And I said, well, I, I buy commercial sausage. That's what most barbecue houses do because we don't know right. how to make sausage. Let me make sausage for you. That's what you said. Okay. And I'm, I'm you know, whatever. <laughs> you brought me some sausage and it was like uh, uh, eating a, a, a brand new slice of bread. I mean, it was so good. Now 
I can't even imagine going back. Going back. To where I was. And I have. I, you know, I, I've, uh, I've, ta- I've eaten some sausage that I used to buy commercially. And I think to myself, I cannot believe I ever sold that. It makes a difference in the barbecue world, the barbecue restaurant world, which I've been in for a long, long time. It makes a difference to be able to manufacture all of your product in, in-house. in-house. And I got to tell you, when we added the, the house-made sausage to the menu, it, it just put us up several notches, several levels to be able to say, and people ask all the time, where do you, where do you get your sausage? And I'm proud to say, well, we make it, make it here. in-house. We make it in-house. So, uh, Bobby, we're going to go back to the kitchen, uh, and you're going to show us as much as you can. You know, you got secrets. We all have <laughs> secrets, you know. We'll tell you everything except that one thing that you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something missing here. Well, yeah, there's something missing. There's a secret that we're not going to tell you. But um, I want you to show us how we make the sausage, and, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Does that sound like a Sounds deal? Sounds great. Let's go make some sausage. We're riding pork shoulder through a 8 millimeter plate. This is the number 22 grinder. The grind about 50 pounds of meat in 10 minutes. It goes through pretty quick. We'll combine this pork shoulder with brisket trimmings here, but later on we'll produce a pork and beef sausage. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to mix up a, a small batch of Texas style hotlicks. This is a mix of brisket, trimmings, and the coarse ground pork that we saw a little bit earlier. You want to come and take a look? You can see it's a little coarser grind. You get a little, t- a nice texture with that sauce and a good bite. So this is my seasoning mixture. We've got some water in there and a little bit of uh, salt and some more salt and a few other things that we're gonna mix all that up into that meat here real quick. There might be a little red pepper in there too. Not super spicy. Terry, how hot is, how hot are the hot links? Just enough to be interesting and- Just right. Just right. Not too hot, not too mild, just 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 enough heat. This right here, this hand mixing is kind of the secret to small batch sausages and craft sausages. It gives it a, a unique texture, something you don't get if you in a commercial commercial process throws it in a machine that's gonna mix it for 15 minutes. The machine doesn't know when it's ready or if it's not ready. So I go by feel when I'm mixing this sausage. When the protein extraction takes place, I get a really good bite. Every piece of meat mixes a little differently. See, it's, it's, it's crumbling apart and falling apart. It's not ready yet. We're looking for a good sticky bind. And you'll be able to feel it as you start mixing. The meat gets stickier and the tub will start coming off the table. Skyhawks. We're getting real close to finishing up all the mixing pork. You can see how how sticky it is. It's, it's bound together real good. When you lift up, the top coming off the ground, and it's sticking. So we're we're ready to mix now. All right, we're going to load the casings up on the horn. I'm using a, a quality casing from Syracuse Casings out of New York. These are pre-tubed, pre-flushed casings, easy to load up. Those of you that make sausage, you know it's important when you fill, fill, fill up the uh, stuffer, back it down real good, get all the air back. So. Tie a simple, simple overhand on, tear off, tie off on the end. I'm gonna make sure those casings are nice and full. They're not too tight. We're gonna go back and length these up in a small, about seven, eight inch lengths here in just a few minutes.
Now we're going to lift these up. And they're about, about seven inches. And we'll hand twist these. I like, I like to twist each one individually. That way I know how much pressure and how tight that casing is. Sometimes I twist two times, sometimes I, three, I may twist three or four times. We got hot links. Terry, you ready to throw those on the smoker? Let's go. Let's smoke them. Here we are, Bobby. We talked about sausage. You showed us how to make it. Then we went and smoked it. And now we're going to eat it. This is the best part. This product right? right here. Right here. It's so we're going to cut into it. Boy, doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look good? That's good. You're going to eat your own sausage. Best sausage you'll ever eat. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Terry. I could eat that every day. I do. <laughs> okay, now well, you you've showed us sausage. So I have some questions, okay? okay. Now, I, I watch you do this a lot. But every, every week. Every week every I watch week. you do this. Uh, but this, this is very interesting. It, I mean, this is an interesting uh, uh, thing to do, and not a lot of people can do it. If they could, every barbecue house would make right. their own sausage. And by the way, if you own a barbecue restaurant and you want to make your own sausage and you're thinking, well, how much is this going to cost me? Well, it's going to cost you about the same as you're paying for the commercial sausage that you're getting now but the quality it'll make a difference a whole it's a whole different world being able to serve people fresh made sausage this is your guy bobby cuban so i have some questions for okay. you did i do that good that was good okay so when you cut your meat up how do you decide and how do you know the ratio between how much meat and how much fat to put into your mix Standard pork butts are about 80, about 80 to 75% lean and about 25% fat. So I'll use the straight pork butts, then I'll adjust the brisket trimmings. Sometimes they're a little bit leaner, sometimes a little fattier. So I'm trying to get that about a 35 to 40% fat, lean to fat ratio. So that we, you're, we're about a 60, 65% lean and about a 35% fat ratio. So here, so you, you, you make the sausage, it's, it's raw, it's in, in casings as we just right. saw, and then, we, and then we smoke it. But you, you shared something with me, and I, of course, you know, uh, I've been in this business a long time, but not making my own sausage. But uh, you told me, you say, now listen, what you have to do is, as soon as you pull it off the smoker, and it takes us about an hour and a half to smoke it to 165, uh, FDA temp inside the sausage. You said you got to put it into an ice bath. Now we're not going to show that today, but right. we're going to talk about it. Well, I didn't know what that was for. You know, explain why you go from the smoker into an ice bath. So when the, when it comes off the smoker hot, if you take some off off the grill smoker, it's it's steaming. That steaming is the moisture coming out of the meat. By throwing that sausage right into ice bath, it immediately cools it down, stops the cooking process, and helps retain that moisture inside the product. Which makes it not shrivel up. It doesn't shrivel up. As its steam is, escapes, that casing is going to shrivel up as that meat gets smaller. Mm -hmm. So, Bobby, do you have, uh, when you, do you have a, a, a plate, a single plate that you use for all sausage, or do you change plates we on change the grinder? change plates. depends on what, you know, what kind of product you want. Uh, the sausage we make in-house here, we use an 8 millimeter plate, which is a coarser grind. It gives the sausage a little bit of texture, a little bit of bite. It's not that emulsified, fine grind commercial stuff you get. So what you're wanting to do, or you're hoping to do, or maybe it just organically will, uh, how much more business could you do outside of what you do for me? I could, I could do about four days a week. I could produce 150 pounds of sausage a day. Just me. I show up just like I do here. I show up, 
prep the meat, grind the meat, mix the meat, just like we, just like we saw back there, and do 100, about 150 pounds a day. So, okay. So are you telling me that you could actually do 600 pounds of sausage a week? I could do, yeah, 600, 700 pounds a week if I did it five days a week. That's a lot of sausage, by the way. Let's talk bologna. Bologna. You know, right now, uh, we serve bologna. We serve smoked bologna at Sullivan Barbecue, and we sell a bunch of it. But I buy the sticks of bologna uh, already cooked, and then we smoke them. We lay smoke on them and call it smoked bologna. But you said to me one day, you said, why don't we make our own bologna? I had never thought about doing it. Right. But here we are. <laughs> you brought me... Uh, uh, you brought me a, a, a stick of bologna that you have made for me to try. And I'm so excited to add that to our menu that we actually produce, cook, and smoke our own bologna. How much different is that than sausage? It's a little different process of the grinding and the multiplication process. It's a lot, like typical bologna is a lot finer grind than your coarse ground sausage. Now, if you want to make coarse ground bologna, we could do that. We would probably call it salami instead of bologna. Yeah. But it's, we're getting that b true bologna texture with an emulsification of the meat. How long do you think it's going to take me to smoke or to cook that bologna to 160, 165? It's already fully cooked. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's yeah, a, it's fully cooked. So I'm just smoking this? That's thing? it. I sous vide that bologna. It's fully oh, cooked. But, okay, but, but, but if we start doing it here... It won't be fully cooked. We have to figure out how to how to sous vide the bologna. All right, so all right, so <laughs> all right, so you wouldn't. So we wouldn't put. Uh, we wouldn't do it like sausage. No. Chop it up, put it in casing, cook it on the pit, or smoke it on the pit. That's not what we're talking. No. About. We're going to produce the bologna first, and we got to cook that, and, th and cook that, and then smoke it, and then smoke it. I am so excited about that I, I, because we sell a lot of bologna here. But and we're it, using your brisket trimmings. Right, right. It's another, another way of using that product instead of throwing it away. Folks, listen, if, if you're in the barbecue business, you, barbecue restaurant, you got to, you, this is the greatest way to, uh, to use your trimmings. We all have trimmings. We all trim our briskets. We all trim our, our, uh, our ribs. To be able to utilize this concept to make your own sausage in-house is another way to uh, stop the madness of the waste that goes on in our business. Bobby Cuban, master at it. <laughs> call him. If you need his number, call me. I'll give it to you. So good to have you today. Hope you've enjoyed this show. Terry Sullivan here. It's the Terry Sullivan Show. We'll see you next time.